Alright guys, so I'm here to do a fan fiction review. Now I've done these in the past a few times here and there, but here's the thing. This isn't something I created. When I do these fan fiction reviews, I usually review stuff that's from other people, you know, stuff that's really interested me. And today I'm going to be reviewing a fan fiction that I recently came across just out of the blue. It's called For Love and Justice. It is a Wonder Woman and Sailor Moon crossover. That's right. Wonder Woman and Sailor Moon. Now that is probably one of the coolest ideas to bring Wonder Woman and Sailor Moon together in a crossover. And don't worry, it does have some funny moments, but it's mostly serious. Now, why I say this is such a great crossover and why this should be done in, like, actual comics is because Wonder Woman and Sailor Moon represent so much as strong female characters. You know, with Wonder Woman, she was pretty much the first female superhero um, she pretty much embodied um, a strong female character. You know, that's what always Diana's been. And the Sailor Scouts, you know, say what you will, I mean, yeah, there is some fan service here and there, and it's, the show is known for that, and even the creator of the manga knows that this is a... pretty much a... Fan, it's, it has fan service in there. But he, it, but the, the characters are still made out to be um, very well-developed characters. Um, regardless of how... Of um, you know what they look like, you know what their uh, what their uh, abilities are. So I thought this was a perfect idea of bringing the sailor c scouts or soldiers, however you prefer, and meeting uh, Diana. You know I thought that'd be a perfect team up right there. So I read this, and it's about seven chapters long. And I was actually expecting okay, it's the, even actually you know what got me into this. The description said that this was going to use a Wonder Woman villain as the main antagonist of the book uh, of this story. In this story. It revolves around one of Diana's lesser-known villains. And that's a lot, because mostly people know Ares, uh, Cersei, and Cheetah. That's the only three... When you really, you, And that's when you, people really have to think about Wonder Woman villains. This is one people mostly never heard of, Dr. Poison. For those who don't know who Dr. Poison is, uh, she's pretty much a villain who's capable of uh, of these, chem has a lot of chemical abilities in her body that allow her to turn people against you or poison or all kinds of stuff. There's been two Dr. Poisons and the continuity's kind of pretty odd, but she's a very lesser known Wonder Woman villain, so I was like aw cool, Dr. Poison. Um, no one's ever used that character before. It's usually Cersei or something. So, the story starts out with, um, and also, I should mention that which con you're probably wondering about continuity before I go any further. Continuity-wise, okay, in terms of Wonder Woman, this is pre-52. This is before the 52 happened, and she was, and her origin was rewritten that she was a, uh, she was a demigod. You know, she was the, she's the daughter of Zeus. Um, that's not in here. They're still going by the original origin, and in terms of Sailor Scouts, this takes place, I think. After season five or during season five, I wasn't completely sure, but yes, this is when Chibi Moon's in here. Um, you saw. It. And here's another thing: they actually go by rather than the American dub, they go by um, the author goes by the Japanese uh, the Japanese names. So, yeah. So that's another. Ki that's kind of cool too. Um. <clears throat> So anyway, let's finally move on to the plot. Now the plot basically focuses around um, the fact that there there's been these uh, woman-oriented riots uh, breaking out across the U.S. and in some parts of Japan, and um, it's being taken out on Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman, you know, doesn't understand what's going on because she tries using her lasso of truth to get the get it out of them, and they basically say, yeah, you're a bad inspiration. You know, you're a horrible inspiration for women. And um, then it's revealed that Dr. Poison was behind all these riots for some reason, which um, it plays into it plays into the story. I don't want to spoil it. Um, so, one, uh, so after talking to Etta Candy, that's right, um, another supporting character that's probably no longer in the New 52, Etta Candy, for those who don't know, was a big supporting character in the Wonder Woman comics. She's also married to Steve Trevor, who also in here... Um, is, is Steve Trevor is also in this book, which I, when Steve Trevor arrived, I was like, yes, Trevor. Um, but 
But yeah, I'll, I'll get on to Steve Trevor um, in a moment. But uh, Wonder, uh, um, Wonder Woman basically tracks Dr. Poison to Japan. Now here's where it gets interesting. Rather than just come across the Sailor Scouts um, in, a ran in just a random, Hey, who are you guys? I'm Wonder Woman. You know us? You know me? Um, I don't know you, no, you, you don't know me, let's fight, uh, let's fight until we figure it out. That doesn't happen in here. It's actually kind of acknowledged that Wonder Woman knows of the sailor soldiers. She knows of their existence in Japan, but she's never met them. She knows of their, what they've done, she knows how they've protected the Earth. Well, she actually, they say, like, she, they've no, they know they're the good guys. They're basically, they say, uh, Wonder Woman basically says, yeah, I know them, they're the protectors of Japan, right? Um, the and um, Ed is like, yeah, you know them? No, but the Justice League can't be everywhere. So I thought that was really cool that they kind of say that they they know of each other, and they kind of allude to, somewhere in the story, they allude to there are other superpower beings in Japan, referencing other anime characters like from Dragon Ball Z and all that, but they don't openly say those. They say like, oh yeah, th they're the first open, they're the first known super uh, superhumans in Japan, but there's reason to believe there's other superpowered beings in Japan. Um, so I thought that was cool. I thought um, I thought that was interesting. Meanwhile, this is going on. Um, Usagi's feeling very uh, downtrodden. She feels like she can't lead the team. She's very scared. Now, this is where a lot of people say uh, where Usagi's like, oh well, she's she's unfit to be leader. You know, she whines a lot and cries and this and that. I kind of, you know, I kind of understand, like, she's a young a young 16-year-old girl with superpowers, and she fights demons and space people and people from the future, all kinds of crazy stuff on a daily basis. I mean, Spider-Man, when Peter Parker first became Spider-Man in, in the, in the uh, Stan Lee books at the, be at the very beginning, Spidey was very scared. You know, Spider-Man, uh, Peter Parker was very scared fighting some of these enemies, like Electro and Sandman. And that's why he said all those jokes to keep his mind off of it. Uh, um, that's kind of what um, Usagi is, in my opinion. She's kind of like um, just a young girl with all this power, but she's scared to death of being of getting killed, which does happen in the part of uh, pretty much of season one. But they bring back everyone, and I'm getting off track. But anyway, also if you can hear any background noise, um, I think my dad's watching Judge Dredd. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, the story continues as, um, I don't want to say how the, the Sailor Scouts and Wonder Woman meet, but it's pretty cool, and there's actually a, <laughs> there's actually something that made me laugh in here, where, um, well, a few things that made me laugh, where, um, Wonder Woman first encounters the Sailor Soldiers, and Sailor Venus basically keeps saying, oh yeah, we, we can totally bring up our PR with Wonder Woman on our side, you know, we'll have to tell the public and all this, and Sailor Mars pops her over the head, it's like, shut up, shut up! <laughs> so I thought that was hilarious, and, um, you know, this was pretty fun. It's not the world's greatest crossover fanfiction. It, it does have some grammar flaws here and there, but not, but they're so little... I couldn't even tell, you know, I had to double check rereading this story. I thought this was really good. Everyone felt great. Everyone had a place in this story. Everyone had it was going for them. In just seven chapters, it was a very relevant crossover. There was no um I'm your lost cousin, I'm your lost dad, or you know, we're somehow related sisters and boop babidi bee, all kinds of that weird fan fiction stuff. It's really cool, but I don't want to give away the main plot, but it involves Dr. Poison and trying to get a hold of Sailor Saturn, which is very cool. Um, even Wonder Woman gets a little downhearted in here, and I gotta say, they really bring out uh, this, uh, this um, author, um, who once again, if you, in case I didn't mention it before, her name is Bookworm with an Attitude. And I gotta say, she really knows how to play off uh, making making the character of Dr. Poison so cool, because like I said, that's a villain no one really really remembers. There's some really cool fight sequences, Steve Trevor shows up, and there's some interesting chem chemistry between him and Manamaru, um, Manamaru, or you better know him as Tuxedo Mask. There's some cool, um, when I say chemistry, I mean like, there's some cool banter here and there that made me laugh. 
Um, and they actually get along pretty well. They start out as, like, they don't like each other, but then Steve and Manamaru pretty much, um, like, oh, yeah, nice meeting you, dude. And everyone who, who shows up in this, in this fanfiction has a place. They, ha they don't feel like, um, oh, yeah, we're just gonna stand over here and do nothing. No, everyone has a, has a rightful place. There's some good action sequences. A little short in some of them, in my opinion, but, eh, what can you do? But anyway, I don't want to really give a lot about this story. All I gotta say, major props, really good. It's really hard to find good Sailor Moon fanfiction that doesn't fall into the other really drawn-out tropes of time travel. Well, time travel's a... if you do it right, it's cool. Or the whole alternate universe where um, she falls in love with another character or they're long-lost cousins or something. Those kind of fanfiction tropes that kind of bother me to no end. Uh, but... This was really fun, and, you know, there's actually... I'm going to spoil the end a little bit, because it's it's not giving away a lot. There's actually something at the end where everyone's saying their goodbyes after, you know, the good guys win. Um, there's actually... An e the end scene is um, where Wonder Woman <laughs> gets a call from Batman on her JLA com uh, communicator, and Sailor Venus is try uh, uh, tries to get uh, tries to talk to Batman. <laughs> it's kind... It's pretty funny. And um, the author has pretty much alluded to a JLA Sailor Moon crossover is the sequel, and I tried asking her, you know, is there any chance we're gonna see the JLA and Sailor Moon, uh, the Sailor, uh, Sailor Soldiers crossover in another story, and she, um, she pretty much said, she replied back to me saying, oh yeah, we're gonna see, uh, you got if I decide to, and I really am trying to think out how to make these two teams work together, um, because she, she said she, one thing she wants to do if she goes ahead with a with a sequel, is actually um, have Batman and Tuxedo Mask fight, and she said when I and then she put in parentheses when I say fight I mean Tuxedo Mask is t it becomes Batman's bitch. <laughs> I laughed out la I I just uh, I started laughing at that, but she said no nah, I'm kidding. But seriously, I think she openly said I th um, Tuxedo Mask and Batman would make a great team up in my opinion. She was kidding about the whole Batman owning Tuxedo Mask, but she said there would be a if she does the if she goes ahead with the sequel with the involving the Justice League, she would have uh, Tuxedo Mask and Batman team up in there as like a mini team up throughout the story. Um, I don't know who she's going to use for the villain for the sequel. Hoping for Dark Side because that would kind of make really that would just be really cool to see all of them get fight Dark Side and I don't know. Galaxia, or, um, somebody, or Queen Barrel, bring back Queen Barrel, or something, I don't know, but, yeah, this was pretty cool, if you enjoy, if you really enjoy pre-52 Wonder Woman, or you're a fan of, Sail of uh, Sailor Moon, like, uh, I am, uh, I've, I've enjoyed the show, um, uh, it's all around fun, some good action, there's some good character, uh, uh, some good character scenes uh, between uh, Usagi and one and Diana. There's actually like some cool conversations here and there, and they actually fight and they actually uh, take on uh, Doctor Poison together. And it's just those two against uh, against this. I I really don't want to spoil anything, but what Doctor Poison unleashes is just like mind blowing. Like it it totally makes sense to have these two care this team team up with uh, Wonder Woman. So if you're like a fan of the of the old uh, pre-52 Wonder Woman stuff and Sailor Moon, I can just hear right now the real Manos, if he's watching this, go, Yeah! <laughs> I can just imagine if real Manos, the real Manos is watching this, I can just imagine him doing that. But this is fun. I'm going to put the link below for the story. It's really fun. Uh, I don't know when I'll do another fanfiction review, because the last one, that was a long... That was a... You, I think that was last year, and it was a it was a story involving um, a lot of Spider-Man villains and zombies, but it wasn't in the Marvel Zombie Universe. Um, but yeah, I don't do these things a lot, these fan fiction reviews a lot. So, and also, please, people, don't ask me to review your fan fiction. This is my thing. I um, this is a, another one of my things I do. But anyway. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, link will be a lo uh, link link will be below for this awesome crossover. And uh, yeah, I'm out. <laughs>